In this video we're using Substance 3D Designer to create a realistic wood grain. Let's go over the keynotes and parameters we'll use first. The Gradient Dynamic helps for more complex gradients by remapping colors from a grayscale input into a new gradient ramp. Gradient Orientation interprets the gradient input horizontally or vertically. A warp node is used to push pixels away uniformly from white areas. The direction is defined by the slope or gradient of the gradient input. Intensity controls the strength. There's never one right value, it depends on your inputs. Don't hesitate to type in a really high value beyond 1. The histogram range node is great to simply decrease the range or to reduce and move the range of a grayscale input. Range is used to reduce the range of the grayscale input. The position parameter lets you move the range you choose with the range slider. The tile generator node is a powerful node to make regular or random patterns. It's a simpler version of the tile sampler node with left controls and inputs. With the position random X and Y sliders, you randomize the pattern position in a non-uniform way. Luminance random brings in random colors. Let's build this basic wood grain setup together. You can then use it as a base for different wood materials. For this quick tip example we start with the anisotropic noise node. We adjust the x amount to 1, y amount to 20 and adjust the random seed value. To blur the base we'll use a blur HQ grayscale with an intensity of 8. The tile generator node is perfect for the knot space. As pattern we use bell because of its smoothness. Let's reduce the x and y amount to 4 and 5 and the scale to 0.6. For final randomization we adjust scale random, position random and luminance random. Now we'll use the warp node with a small intensity of 0.1 to deform and prepare the area where the knots come in place. Finally we blend the knots in with a blend node and the max lighten mode. We continue with another warp to distort the base slightly more. As gradient input we use a pearly noise with a scale of 4. When I work with deformations I generally first go for bigger deformations and work myself through to the final micro details. The smaller the inputs are, the smaller the intensity amount of the warps are. For the color and detail variation of the grain we start with a grunge map 002. A histogram range node gives us the control over the color range. We reduce the range to 0.2. Let's connect the warp with a gradient dynamic node and the histogram range into the gradient input. Then we use a multidirectional warp node for smaller details. As intensity input we take a directional noise 1 node. Let's decrease the intensity to 2.5 for a less intense effect. For the final details we'll use another warp node with a really small intensity of 0.002. This really helps to break up the wood lines slightly. As gradient input we'll use the same directional noise output. Here you can see a small example without and with additional warp effect. Here's our final base result of the setup we did before. You can use it as base wood grain, save this setup and use it in another project or make a custom node out of it. This will speed up your workflow a lot. Let's dive into some variations and examples of this tip. Adjusting the anisotropic noise controls is great for base adjustments. X and Y amount controls proportions. Smoothness and interpolation sliders control the roundness and details in the wood grain. Random seed can be adjusted for individual nodes or the whole graph. Use amount, size, position, and luminance in the tile generator to adjust the knots. Warp intensity lets you control the deformation for the areas where the knots appear. With further blend node adjustments you control the knot grain further. Use the grunge map and the histogram range node for color adjustments. With balance you adjust the relation between dark and lighter colors and contrast is great for the transition between colors. I generally use the warp node for deformations where I don't need control over specific directions. For more control over the directions I use the multidirectional warp node. 
I choose in how many directions to warp and switch between the different modes to adjust the behavior. For more control over specific color areas the histogram select node is great. Use the auto levels node for the full color range from black to white followed by the histogram select node to select areas. With the range slider you control the color range and with position you can move it around. Contrast adjusts the fall off of the selection. This mask can be used for example to color certain areas specifically. Here I use the gradient map for the base color and the mask to darken some areas. If you want to learn more, you can download and open the graphs shown in the video. Thanks for watching and we would love to hear your thoughts, ideas and suggestions for future quick tips. So let us know them in the comments. See you in the next quick tip episode.